Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in Five Minutes. I'm your ever loving host, Shorty. And for this week's first review, Arcade Kings. Um, I think this actually may have come out last week. I'm not 100% sure. I know I added it on very late, simply because I read a couple of pages of it in the back of another image comic book, and I was like, damn, this is good. Have I missed this? And I went and checked, and I saw it was available, so I ordered a couple of copies. Nobody's asked me for it, but it's the kind of thing that if a couple of pages in the back of a, somebody else's comic book makes me think, yeah, I'm going to get it, then yeah, I'll give it a shot. Did that with Astro Bots. Really, really cool comic book, and I'm glad I did it. This one, exactly the same. Now, I was already kind of going in a bit pre-sold on it, because the first few pages I read of it were fantastic, but very quickly realised it was doing something kind of special. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about in regard to it is its setting, I suppose. Uh, the time and place it is. It's all fictional, it's all made up. There may be superheroes, there may not. Uh, there may be giant alien monsters, there may not. A lot of it is kind of left up to basically uh, the story to develop there's no really easy answers there's a reference where what's he refers to was referred to as a city's hero but the only time you really see him doing and there's in a boxing ring so he's like a sporting hero an actual hero but then the guy he's fighting against is probably another 50 percent taller than him with different colored skin and looks like an alien so i mean it, there's a lot of ambiguity but i like what's going on what it also is is retro futuristic now that is a term that's kind of loaded a little bit uh, in terms of literature and even uh, visual aesthetics. People generally have like a couple of solid ideas of what they think of retrofuturism. Like the most common that I have in my head is always steampunk. It's because I like Wild West stuff uh, and Victoriana and the idea of more advanced technology in that uh, time setting. Leads to interesting story de uh, developments of like it's still a colonialist capitalist kind of nature to the world and advanced technology. Would it save people or would it make such the divides worse? Um, you also have some sci-fi stuff. Orbital Blue is a really nice, uh, sad Cowboys in Space role-playing game I like. Uses the futuristic uh, idea of space travel uh, with a kind of 60s, 70s and 80s aesthetic and music vibe to it. This one is far much narrower. Um, in terms of futuristic stuff, yeah, there is certainly a vibe of that. It does seem like a slightly more advanced kind of thing to it. But what, not too far in the future, if at all. Maybe like some advances in technologies, like there's a giant robot-controlled fighting robot. But in terms of going back, it's also not that far. Um, the two things it's kind of riffing on is the golden launch age of um, shonen manga. Big, over-the-top fight sequences. Um, and also... A uh, period in history where if people said they played video games, what they meant was they went down to uh, a building which had a bunch of uh, upright arcade machines and they put money into them so they could play them. Now, I've never really been big into manga. It's not my cup of tea. There's a few movies I've watched I've enjoyed, um, and I quite like the Cyberpunk TV series. Uh, but I do remember going to arcades. Uh, one Saturday, me and my friends, we have three friends in fact, saved up all our pocket money and poster, uh, paper round money, and we completed the four-player sideways-scrolling Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. It was fantastic. One well, of the best days of my childhood. But what I remember about it is that feel of going somewhere else and kind of being an actual part of a community and getting to know those people rather than, I suppose, yes, there's still an online community where people have their game handles and they'll play with the same people over and over again and there's like Discord channels and streaming uh, sites. It is all still a community, but I remember it a little bit differently. I, I still play video games now, but my recollection of it is far more uh, getting to know individual people, uh, spotting familiar faces in the crowd who you may not be friends with, but you recognise them. Couple of that with the kind of games that I was playing, I say the side scrolling, huge beat em ups uh, were very, very popular. Um, and you get this sense of standing against the world, and it was kind of cool and fun. And it felt a little bit like your parents didn't approve, and the arcade was somewhere where you weren't supposed to go or spend all your money there. Um, there's always better things to spend your money on. I like all of these vibes. Uh, it does have a bit of risk of falling into nostalgia where you think of like the, the South Park member berries, where you don't really need to be about anything, just say you, you remember Star Wars. Um, and it also runs a little bit of a risk of uh, sugarcoating and glossing over some of the darker things. Now, don't get me wrong, I think if they'd gone too far into either of those and re really pushing nostalgia or trying to push darkness, it'd have ruined it. Because it is a big, over-the-top action sequence, and it is fun. It is unmitigated fun. And if you don't like it, I mean, why wouldn't you like fun? I mean, unless, like, Anadonia or something like that. But fun is great, I like it, and it really leans into this heavily. The first big action sequences we get are phenomenal. They are punchy. The, the pacing is fantastic, done by page layout and lots of small elements uh, of panels. So you basically have little quick bits of action. Um, and even the motion lines and the, the silly onomatopoeia work effectively. Because it is going for that kind of vibe where the dynamism of it all 
is just as over the top as the dialogue and the stories. And the story's fantastic as well. There's like this, this hero who retired and he had kids and he started a fighting academy and one of them left and has become this master of martial arts and fights against a street gang called the Street Sharks, which literally have fins as part of their hats. It's brilliant and silly and charming and beautiful. I'm going to do what I usually don't do here and just open up to random pages just to show you the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Look at those colourings, look at the action, look at the layout, look how quick everything is moving. It is an absolute superb bit of writing and artwork, and it's all the one guy, Dylan Burnett. Don't really know much about the guy. Um, he has done some stuff with Jenk I've experienced in the past, but don't remembered as well. But honestly, I think this could be like a, clown, a crowning glory for him. It, it is fantastic, and I hope if you're looking to find it in a comic shop, give it a go. Flick through it. Honestly, it will captivate you. I've absolutely loved it. Uh, that's it for me for now, though. I'll be back tomorrow with another review. Until then, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.